You know what would ruin a trip in the outdoors quicker than anything? Dying. 1,300 deaths a year, according to the CDC, from hypothermia. You know what really ruin your friend's trip on the outdoors? Dying while you're with them. So let's talk about layering, how to be comfortable, how to make the most of the gear you choose, and hopefully how to prevent death. Welcome to Adventure Widely. Today I want to talk about how to make the most of your layering system, how to be comfortable and safe when you're outdoors doing it. One of the things you have to be aware of when you're in the backcountry in extreme environments is that you probably cannot be warm and dry. The problem with trying to keep yourself warm is you are always borderline sweating. Sweating is the quickest way to bring on hypothermia and also just make your trip uncomfortable. What you want to try to do is stay cool and dry. One of the things you do not want to wear when you're in the backcountry is cotton. Cotton does not dry fast. Wet skin and wet clothing uh, will make you lose heat five times faster than having dry clothing and dry skin. If you're already in an environment that is tough and harsh to exist in, the last thing you want to do is be dissipating heat even faster than your body can generate it. Cotton gets wet and stays wet, and you want to try to avoid bringing that into the backcountry with you. The only time I ever pack cotton with me is if I have to clean glass. Um, I'm on a YouTube set right now, there's a good chance I'm carrying a camera with me into the backcountry, so I will carry a cotton bandana to clean off that glass, and that's the only thing that caught in my kit. Other than that, I'm either wearing wool or one of the modern synthetics that we have available. The modern synthetics that we have now are, are very good materials. Uh, most of them are designed to wick away moisture, and it all starts at the base layer closest to your skin. Those base layers are designed to pull the moisture and sweat from your body and bring it to the surface where it can actually evaporate. So let's jump right in and talk about some of the layers that we have and how best to choose the layers that you're gonna use because if we're out in the backcountry, especially if we're backpacking or we're gonna be out for extended days, and you, you wanna make sure that the gear that you have with you is optimal over a wide range of temperatures. A lot of that's gonna come down to venting. Venting is very critical to be able to stay comfortable and dry when you're in the backcountry. So let's talk about the base layers first. There are two options that you have, wool or synthetic. Do not wear cotton underwear, do not wear cotton base layers. A lot of the old waffle grid pattern, white long johns that you might see at the grocery stores for sale are typically a cotton or a cotton blend. Those are very bad to uh, pull moisture away from you and actually dry out. Don't buy those. Instead, the two options you do have, wool or synthetic, and there's, there's a plus and minus for both of those. Wool is typically a little bit heavier than synthetics. Wool also, in my opinion, is not quite as warm as some of the synthetics now that are available. But the benefit to wool is that wool, if you're out for the backcountry for multiple days, does not breed bacteria on the surface. Synthetics, for some reason, bacteria loves to grow on them. So if you're gonna be out for multiple days wearing the same base layer or day after day, uh, synthetics sometimes can start to smell. So if you're by yourself, maybe not a problem. But if you have uh, climbing partners with you or backpacking partners with you, Try to avoid that. So the first layer I have here is wool underwear. It's warm, it's uh, antimicrobial, and it also will pull the moisture away from the skin and help you stay dry. You want your base layer to be close fitting, but not constricting. If it's constricting, it's gonna cut off circulation, and that's gonna prevent uh, you to actually stay warm and have good temperature regulation. So I have a pair of, uh, of wool base layers here. This is the top, and one thing I think that you should look for is that we want to try to minimize the amount of stuff that we're carrying, especially if it's on our back for a couple days. So this uh, pair of base layers here has a nice deep zipper so you can vent this. Being able to vent and get rid of excess heat, when you're, especially when you're working up a sweat, uh, is very critical in order to stay dry and not actually start sweating when you're in the backcountry. Starting to sweat, you're going to get wet and then you have a greater chance of uh, cold related illnesses happening uh, and just being uncomfortable to begin with. So. Base layers aside, next layer up is the mid layer. The mid layer in this case can be synthetic. Uh, we talked about the base layer needing to be wool. If you're gonna be out for multiple days to help with bacterial growth so you don't smell. But because you have a base layer on, that is a buffer between your skin and the next layer up, which is the mid layer. So this can be synthetic. I typically prefer a fleece. The fleece that I have here is a harder face fleece. The nice thing about that is that the harder face fleece does not uh, let wind through as easily as some of the more piled based fleeces. The other thing that I like about this fleece here, and this, again, this should be fairly close fitting, but not constricting. But this one here has a nice deep V again, so you can vent, you can open this one up, you can open the base layer up, and you can get rid of a lot of that heat very, very fast. Nice design feature this has too, besides just the uh, deep V, so you notice here it has this little bit of fabric that goes across where the zipper's at. This is a chin guard, and it prevents the, the zipper material and the cold zipper itself from resting against your chin or resting against your neck when it's all zipped up. 
So that is a, a nice feature to look for. Not all the base layers or mid layers have that. This mid layer does. Next, after we have the mid layer, is going to be the jacket. I typically don't wear a mid layer on my legs. I don't find in the lower 48 have a need for much more than a base layer and then a pair of soft shell pants. Soft shell pants uh, are nice because they are windproof, but they also uh, dissipate moisture very easily if you do get sweaty underneath them. Unlike a pair of rain pants, which are waterproof, being just windproof, the water and sweat can flow through the material a lot easier. Most soft shell pants, though, are treated with a DWR finish, a durable water repellency. So they were originally designed for ice climbers to be up against frozen waterfalls. They do shed water and they do shed snow pretty well. It's very unusual for me to be out in the backcountry with a pair of soft shell pants and have them ever get wet to the point where it's uncomfortable to wear. One feature to look for with soft shell pants is the ability, again, to vent. So this pair of pants here, and I'll hold this part up, they have thigh vents on both sides. So you can open up the thigh vent and let in a lot of cool air and get rid of a lot of heat. I've been in the North Cats Casey for hiking up a mountain and with the soft shell pants fully vented and just the base layer on top, uh, I was comfortable. As soon as you stop, you want to start throwing layers on though because that's a little chilly if you're not having uh, heat generation from the output uh, and exertion that you're doing to go up the mountain. But having the ability to vent your thighs, as you notice, there's a, there's a common theme here in most of the gear, it's ability to vent because you will generate heat if you are carrying a pack, if you're trudging through snow, if you're snowshoeing, if you're climbing. There's a lot of heat generation that goes on in these activities. We may be able to get rid of that heat um, so we can be comfortable and not have to carry a lot of different layers with us. So soft shell pants aside, we go on to the jacket. This jacket here, one of my favorite features of this guy is the fact that it has very deep pit zips. So again, we're trying to maximize our layering system here, and we're trying to look for things that are very versatile. So in regards to this, as you can see here, we have pit zips. So we can get rid of heat, and still keep the jacket on. Now this is a soft shell again, so it's not going to be waterproof, but it's going to shed snow, and it's going to shed wind, and keep the wind off you as well. So key features on this, I don't like elastic cuffs. I really like Velcro, because you can adjust how tight it is around the wrist. This is another spot right here to, to trap in heat. You can vent with the pit zips. You can vent by unzipping the jacket itself. A lot of these jackets too, if you open up the pocket, the pocket goes right in to a fabric material on the inside. So the pocket also acts as a vent. And then the better jackets, as you'll notice here, there's an elastic cord. And that cord is reachable inside the pocket. So that is a drawstring. So you can draw the bottom of the hem tight to the body. So you can really seal this jacket up pretty well, keep a lot of the heat in, and then as you get warm, start opening up uh, sleeves, open up pockets, open up pit zips, open up the front of the jacket, and really get rid of that excess heat as well so you don't start to sweat. One thing to talk about too is that a trend lately has been to put hoods on almost everything. Uh, we have base layers with hoods, mid layers with hoods, soft shells with hoods, and then puffy coats with hoods. The problem is if you have all this and you have all these hoods, you either have a bunch of bulk back here, so you look like the hunchback of Notre Dame, and nothing wants to fit right, or you put out all these hoods up, and then you have a problem getting the helmet on um, if you're climbing, or you just have a problem with constriction, because you have all this material up here. It gets really tight around the neck, having all this material come up around you as well for the hoods. I don't like all those hoods on things. I really prefer a hat. It gives you a lot more flexibility and movement to your head. You don't have peripheral blocking. And if it is really cold, but the only thing that really should have a hood on it is your big puffy coat that you might have to pull out. Otherwise though, I think a hat, especially a thin hat, is probably one of the better things to go with. This is a windstopper hat. As you notice, most of the gear here is all windstopper material or a windproof material, but not waterproof. Again, that is also to help get rid of excess moisture. If you have uh, rain gear, hard shell gear, uh, it will trap all that moisture in there. But having a uh, windstopper material, it helps get rid of that sweat a lot faster. So with this hat, and one of my favorite pieces of the gear is this buff. Now, if you don't know what a buff is, uh, go buy one and you'll love this thing. It is a cylindrical tube, a fabric, no seams on it. And then it is very versatile, it is stretchy. They have numerous versions now. This is one of the originals, but they have ones that are made with wool, they have uh, ones that are windproof. But I don't know if you necessarily need all that. This one has been fine for me for a lot of things. But what's great about it is that we'll put this around and I'll end up blocking my microphone here slightly. So now you have a nice gasket around the neck. 
And if it's really, really cold, you can bring the fabric up and you can cover your nose, you can cover your mouth, you can cover your cheeks, you can get the wind off of that. So if it's windy and cold, you're not getting a lot of wind burn coming in. Let me throw a hat on here. It's gonna come down and it has extra coverage on the ears. And now it's just a little bit open. You end up throwing on some goggles or some glacier glasses and you have pretty much protected the entire head from wind directly onto you. So this is a, a very versatile setup. I can turn my head and unlike with a hood, I don't have anything blocking my peripheral vision or being able to see around things. So I prefer this method far more than having a hood, especially with hoods on base layers or hoods on mid layers and stuff like that as well. Cause that just, just this gets in the way of actually trying to see and especially if you're climbing. And then in the summertime, this thing also doubles as a headband, doubles as a hat. There's a whole bunch of things you can use for a buff. Well worth the money to get one of these guys in there. And then lastly, we'll talk about the puppy coat. Now if it is really cold, I might even leave my soft shell on, especially if it's not been snowing and my soft shell on the surface isn't damp. Now you should shop for a puffy that is a waterproof material on it. This one is, this is an older jacket. I've actually had this for about a decade. But what's nice about this is that the material on the top of the sleeve is more abrasion resistant. And then where it doesn't need to be on the inside, because you're not running up against branches or running up against rock, it's a thinner material. And they did this to help cut down on weight because you are carrying a lot of this stuff into the backcountry with you. If you, everything's too heavy, you're not gonna wanna carry it. You might leave it behind. But what's nice about this jacket, we'll pull this on here. is again, I have the ability with Velcro to cinch this up, make this tight so I keep the air out. I have a draw cord down here in the hem again, which is reachable on the inside of the pocket to be able to pull the draw, pull the bottom of the coat tight, seal that in. I have an inside pocket with a zipper. Now on this side, this pocket is shaped funny. It's shaped for either ski goggles or it also fits a one liter Nalgene bottle. If you are in very, very cold weather, being able to stick a Nalgene bottle in here and keep it close to your body heat to prevent it from freezing is actually very important. On an ice climbing trip last year, it was negative 11 out during the day for the high. And in my backpack, a uh, three quarter full Nalgene bottle froze. And that was with hiking out to the climb. Most moving water doesn't freeze, but it was so cold that even with that bottle sloshing around in the back of my backpack, the water still froze. Keeping it in here, it won't freeze if you have this coat on and against your body. Now, it was way too hot to be able to keep it in, in this jacket while I was hiking. Um, so there is a, a good piece of gear that I'd recommend for that. That's this guy here. This is a Nalgene Cozy. So it's a little insulated pocket. You should put a one liter Nalgene bottle into. So if you fill your Nalgene bottle with warm water before you leave, there's a really good chance that this is gonna last for another hour or maybe even two and keep this from freezing up on you. One last thing I talk about is gloves. Now, I am somebody that when I hike, my hands get really hot and my head gets hot. So these will usually be some of the first things that come off if I'm trying to make sure I don't end up getting sweaty. So I think it's important to find a glove that allows you to have good warmth when you're being idle, that you can operate the draws with, with one hand there if you need to, keep out all the weather that comes into the glove. And then another key feature of this is that the liner on these gloves completely comes out. So this has two benefits. One, I can take this out of the glove and then I can let it dry. So if I am camping for the night, this will go inside my sleeping bag and it'll, the body heat from, my, from me inside the sleeping bag will help dry this out. Where the waterproof glove here on the outside, this might be waterlogged and be really hard to dry if all this material was shoved in there. It also allows me to work around camp and not have to have all the bulk of both layers on here, but still keep some warmth. So I like to look for gloves that are versatile like that as well. I can kind of regulate temperature with them. Uh, and last to talk about is footwear. Now I'm only gonna talk about socks on this. Boot fit is very important um, and it's individual for everybody. So there's lots of great boot manufacturers out there, but find the boot that fits you because everyone's shape of the boot is slightly different and everyone's feet slightly different. So what fits me and the brands that I like might not fit you at all. But the one thing that is true is that you want a good quality pair of socks and you want to make sure that your boot is not too tight. Again, if you make the boot too tight and you constrict, you put double 
double, triple pairs of socks in there, hoping that'll be warmer. Then put too much pressure on your body and you're not gonna get good blood flow. Bad blood flow is gonna uh, equal cold feet. And if you are in extreme environments, that could also lead to frostbite. So I'm gonna try to avoid having shoes too tight, try to avoid having pretty much everything too tight, but having it snug so you don't have to heat up all that dead air space is very beneficial to being out there in the cold. So that's how I like the layer. I try to make sure that everything I have can be vented somehow. Deep V's on the tops, vents on the thighs for my pants, pit zips for my jacket, and having the ability to, to change radically how well that garment protects me to how well it is vented allows me to only carry a few things and make those things very versatile over a huge temperature range. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. And if you have any questions at all, uh, please leave those down there too. Thanks again and adventure widely.